Hey, it's Sasha Evdikov. It is October 15th, 2015, and welcome to the Stock Market Rapid Recap. Now, in this week's uh, video, what we're going to focus on, as far as the lesson goes, is looking at finding hot stocks to trade versus finding your technical pattern. And I know that a lot of people are always looking at, let me find that next great stock, or they're trying to look for the next hottest stock to break out. Um, and they're all focused about the stock and less so much on what works for them or finding the technical pattern. So that's what we're going to look at today in this week's lesson. Now, I hope you've had a great week so far. Uh, enjoyed some time with your family over the weekend and, you know, just made the most of it um, as far as spending some quality time with people. Uh, as for us, what we did was we went to a festival this weekend. It was a sauerkraut festival, ironically enough, and there was a few sausages here and there that we got to sample. And uh, we also went to a roller derby. So it was my first time at a roller derby. I don't know if any of you actually participate in a roller derby, uh, but it was uh, definitely something interesting or different to see and I always enjoy looking at different things or just uh, you know uh, meeting and greeting with other people and just exploring and broadening my horizons so what I'd like to do is before we get into the lesson uh, I do want to share some news with you and what's going on here over the next uh, month or two or a couple of months and what's my plan and objective so uh, if you take a look at the um, traders fly website um, you've noticed probably that the a money-making stock chart setups for penny stocks is coming very soon. And in fact, it is releasing. I've uploaded the files. The files are already online. And uh, they should be within Amazon live and active within a couple of days. So it usually takes about three to four days for it to appear on Amazon. So I will send you another email once this book is actually live on Amazon and where you can get it. So the files will be there and it'll definitely be there by next week's rapid recap. So it's already uploaded, proofed, double checked, um, you know, and it's ready to go. It's just a question of when it goes through their system. So if you're waiting for for the penny stock book uh, as far as studying charts, reading charts. Um, this is really focused on charts that are less than $10. Now, the typical definition for a penny stock is for stocks under $5. It actually used to be for stocks under $1, hence the name penny stocks. But through inflation and as things move and adjust, now it focuses on uh, you know, stocks that are less than $5. However, for this book, what I did was focus on stocks less than $10 because pe people who are interested in trading penny stocks are people who are looking to trade the cheaper stocks, and it really focuses on a different type of person. Now, there's nothing wrong with trading penny stocks, from my opinion, because we all have different things that work for us, uh, risk tolerances, goals, objectives, account sizes, you uh, you know, so there's nothing wrong with trading penny stocks. There are some great advantages, in fact, because the big boys or the operators don't really trade the penny stocks. However, there's also disadvantages. So you just need to be aware and understand of what's going on beneath the surface behind penny stocks and why you may want to trade them. Now, as far as for me to trade them, I don't trade penny stocks anymore. As a full disclosure, um, you know, I don't really trade the penny stocks anymore for uh, one major reason, and that is because if you take a look at this stock as an example, SSY, um, you can see that this stock is $1.72. And I'll give you an insight of why I don't trade penny stocks anymore. Um, for example, if you look at the amount of shares traded, we have 3.3 thousand shares traded. And at the highest peak or averaging, we're averaging around 30,000 shares. So if I was to really trade, let's say, $60,000 worth of this stock, I would just move it way too much because um, you know your, your average volume on a day-to-day -day basis I mean you're looking at 23,000 shares and 23,000 um, shares times two dollars you know even 25,000 shares times two dollars you're looking at fifty thousand dollars so the stock really is moving on fifty thousand dollars of capital on a day-to-day -day basis uh, same thing with uh, some other stocks like this um, so if we take a look at let's see where's another one PIP 
Um, so here again, a dollar seventy for this stock trading thirty two thousand shares. So uh, you know, with the capital requirement, once you start trading, you know, a hundred thousand dollars per trade, you would just move the stock too much, and that goes the same with stocks like this, APT, which are trading fifteen thousand. Uh, shares today and at, at two dollars uh, then we got lei so what happens is the larger your account grows the more you need to trade to capture that move and as you start growing your account size uh, trading lighter stocks like this or stocks that trade light volume it's going to be very difficult to get into them and also get out of them you would just move the stock too much and what I mean by movement is uh, take a look at this movement right here when somebody gets into that stock and they trade a large amount they move it and then probably that same person is trying to get out of it it pulls the stock back down so this becomes problematic, and um, as you start trading larger, you'll probably want to do the same thing as go to larger and more expensive stocks unless you get the liquidity. So that's one of the reasons why I don't personally trade penny stocks. I think the charts, studying charts is fantastic because, uh, because of the manipulation that happens. I think you can learn a lot, and you can see some uh, spikes on why stocks move the way that they move. So there's a lot of great learning lessons, and I enjoy studying charts. It's one of the reasons that uh, it makes me better, a better trader, a better investor is by studying a variety of charts and movements and behaviors. Uh, but I still think that, you know, penny stocks do have their place in the trading environment and there's a lot to learn from it. And they do have some great advantages. For example, you know, if you're looking to trade just a thousand or 2000 shares, um, you know, $5,000, $10,000 account, uh, it's fantastic because um, the runs that you can get, the pops that you can get in the percentages that you can get are phenomenal. Um, you know, they're great, but you have to really be mindful and be aware that there is manipulation that happens. So in either case, if you're looking to uh, study some charts about penny stocks, um, looking to get a lot of insight about my thoughts on penny stocks, I also have a 10, 15 page intro there as well that talks about the advantages and disadvantages and things to watch out for regarding penny stocks, then uh, take a look at this book. It'll probably be up, be up available on Amazon by Monday or Tuesday and definitely by Thursday next week's rapid recap and uh, you can take a look and check that out uh, when you get a chance. Now as far as this week's lesson I do want to cover finding a hot stock to trade versus finding your technical pattern to trade. So before we get into this I do want to take a look at the quick market and some of the other stocks that we have been watching trading and looking at. Um, so really overall the market when you look at it and break it down you can see that we were coming up to this level and then we reached rejected it. Now we're trying and attempting the bounce again, but we're doing so on lighter volume. So for me, you know, it doesn't it doesn't convince me on these moves until we really get some huge surge and influx of volume, some good movement. Now, does that mean I'm holding on to my positions if my stops are hit? No, I do not. So some of you know that we were short the banks and the financials in the past here this last couple of weeks. So when we look at things like WFC, such as Wells Fargo, so you can see in this chart, what happened was that uh, this stock and a lot of the financials, in fact, are bouncing right now. So they're bouncing right here and they're pulling uh, the market higher a bit. You got Goldman Sachs as well uh, that's moving here on this uh, bullish engulfing bar. And when things engulf uh, the charts like this, you're out. There's no ifs, ands, or buts. You simply get out out and that is because you don't need the risk and even if you got into this stock way up here at the top uh, you're still out so make sure you're sticking to your stops rather than hoping praying stick to your rules stick to your plan and then you'll be in a better situation with your trades and your account. Uh, we also have uh, Bank of America popping heavily. So again, more financials doing well. So uh, most of you know I was short over here in this level. And then we added to the position over in this area. So, you know, you take some profits here. And as that uh, stock now comes back, you get out. Uh, if your stop is right here, you're out. You should be gone. Uh, take your profits. Move on to the next stock. So 
That's what you should be doing in terms of if you're trading financials. And this goes with GoPro, this goes with Tesla, this goes with Apple, with Amazon, all those different stocks. If you're looking at these different stocks and you have a stop and you're moving and adjusting your stop, something is wrong. So if you're adjusting your stop, you shouldn't be in that position. So let's talk about finding a hot stock to trade versus trading a technical pattern. A lot of people that I talk to in terms of email, people who email me, people who uh, call me on the phone and we just do a brief discussion, they're always looking for the next hot stock or they're looking to ask me what I would do with, let's say, CMI. What would I do with Tesla? What would I do with Alibaba? Okay, they're asking to find the next hot stock. And looking at things like that, is typical and traditional. And that's not necessarily to say it's bad, but if you're trading and if you're trying to become active in the market, you don't care what stock it is. And I know for some of you maybe just starting to watch this rapid recap that haven't watched some of my previous rapid recaps, you might be wondering, what is he talking about? I want to trade stocks. I want to invest in stocks. And you know that's how you make money is by investing in stocks. And in, in theory, yes, at a, at a fundamental level, yes, you're trading the stock. But if you're a trader, you don't care if it's Alibaba you don't care if it's Apple. You don't care if it's you know um, Caterpillar. You don't care if it's Harley Davidson. You don't care which stock it is, and you don't care which direction it goes in. What you care about as a trader is the movement and the action. You care about the pattern, the pattern that you're comfortable with to trade. So for example, if all you know in technical analysis is the moving average and you only know how to read the weekly chart, here's what you would do. You would wait until a stock breaks that moving average right here and you get in it long. When it breaks the moving average again to the downside, you get out right there and you would ride that stock. So you keep things simple and you would trade the technical analysis. You don't care if it's Apple. You get into that stock when it gets into that moving average. Let's say wherever it was. Moving average. And then you would get out right here when it breaks the moving average. Um, if it's, let's say, Netflix. Here's our moving average. Okay, Breaks it or bounces on it. You get in it and you get out when it breaks that moving average. So if that's all you know, then that's all you trade. That's the only way you trade. Okay, If you're looking at um, support and resistance, this is the one I was going to uh, give an example of McDonald's. Looking at this resistance line, if all you know is a straight line support and resistance, then these are the stocks you're looking for. You're looking for support and resistance. And when this stock is coming up to resistance and if it breaks it on heavy volume or it breaks it and you see it, if that's your system, if that's your trading system, then that is the way that you should be trading. Then you're looking for these patterns. You're looking for straight line patterns. So CSX, look at this pattern. Here's the weekly, here's the monthly. Look at this. We show weakness coming down on this bar, weakness here, and now again, there's weakness. So you're waiting for this break of this bar. Uh, look at this one, how this one worked out for you. Walmart, Okay, if we're looking on the weekly, here's the straight line pattern. Stock broke right here. If you shorted it, boom, what have you been up? Right here, $70 shorted it, and you'd be up 10, 11 points right here. 16% on your money in just two months, less than two months. Okay, so if you only know straight line patterns, then that's what you trade. If you only know moving averages, then you'd get in You know, right here at this area, and then you get out right here. So you'd be long for that period of time. So again, trading the pattern and the technical analysis pattern that you know is more important than looking for the hot stock. I know that a lot of people, they want to trade the hot, sexy stocks. They want to trade the stocks that, you know, oh, it's Apple. Oh, my goodness. 
It's just got great phones. Or they, they talk about the GoPro. Oh, the, the cameras are phenomenal. And yeah, okay, the cameras are great. But investing in something is a lot different than looking at the product. Investing and trading is a lot different than just looking at the company. It's also about reading your style of trade. So you look at the company, you look at the fundamentals. That's not to say you ignore the fundamentals, but if you only know one way to trade, you trade it based on the technical, simple version for you. Rather than trying to do every single different type of trade and, and you know, somebody mentions to you Alibaba, then somebody mentions uh, Yelp, which is doing horrible. You know, if you only know a technical pattern, you can do really well with one technical pattern. As you start getting into longer term investing, you know, you have to look at things deeper. You start putting more and more puzzle pieces together. This is just a starting point. This is just a starting point for you to trade. And then as you start building on this, you start adding your moving averages. You start adding these things together. So look how this plays out. Here we have a 200-day moving average. Here's our upward supporting trend line. And it's rejecting right there at that upward 200-day um, moving average. It's rejecting prices there. It comes back to it, rejects it. So you start adding a second piece together. And you could have done this with other stocks like Voya was another one. Upward pattern, stock broke. There's your short entry. Ride it down. Pretty simple. Um, Oki. Oki did the same thing. Here's a A, B, C, D pattern. Okay, again, upward pattern, broke. There it is. Another trade to the short side. Wells Fargo. We talked about this one. Boom. There was There was the move. So if you got into this move right here, when it was breaking initially on heavy volume all the way down here, would you be psyched out right now that the stock is popping a dollar? It's popping a dollar and you're all the way up here at 55 and it's at 52? No, you don't worry about it. You're not worried because you took profits down here. You took some shares off. That's the system. That's the plan. You know, Goldman Sachs, the same thing. Here's the upward channel pattern or the upward support pattern. Okay. Breaking continues, and now it's popping higher. It's popping higher quite heavily, $6, huge volume. I would step out. I wouldn't wait to ride it back up here to the top. That's not something you want to do. But if you're looking at a pattern, pattern-specific thing, you're much better off. You just cover up which stock or which ticker it is, and now you can start looking at exactly the pattern, the patterns that work in your favor. And why am I saying, okay, ignore the company? I'm only saying this as a little drill, as a little exercise for you. I'm saying don't worry about the company at the beginning because your mind is going to be going crazy in a lot of different directions initially, especially if you're just starting out in trading. You're going to think about the company. You're going to be thinking about the products, the services that they offer, who they are, especially if you bank with Bank of America, if you bank with Wells Fargo. You're going to be thinking about these companies and the services they provide. You're too emotionally attached. Okay, Once you can get out of that habit, you start putting other things into perspective. Then you start looking at the financials, the products, the GoPro. Okay, yes, it has a great camera. It has a great functional business model, but is it also going to be great for investors? It's going to be great for traders. Then you go into the next level. Is it healthy right now? How are the investors trading the stock now? So maybe it has great fundamentals. Maybe it has great cash flow. Maybe it has a great product, but what are the investors doing? So if all those other three things at the beginning are fantastic, but then the investors are not stepping in, then why would you step in? Why would you step in if all the other big investors aren't stepping in? That means the company isn't going to have money to invest in the future because as you're buying shares, the company has money. It gets money to invest into future products, services, development, and so on, marketing. So if you're not uh, convinced that the investors are stepping in, why would you step in? So at the beginning, 
looking at just the initial technical analysis pattern that works for you. Learn to trade those simple patterns, whether it's just a straight line at how many times something hits. And I'm trying to keep this really simple, really simple, uh, because uh, you know we can get more complicated into evaluating how much they come into these swing points, how fast they come into the swing points, how hard they come in, how hard they bounce, and then when they take them out, how long they're supposed to be consolidating. So all these things we need to be watching very closely. So let me summarize this for you. Do I look at the fundamentals? Absolutely. Do you want to look at the fundamentals? Do you want to look at how the stock is doing? Absolutely. Unfortunately, when you're new, when you're a beginning trader in the market, we get too attached to the names. We trade the stocks that we know as companies because we've had relationships with them. So if you're looking to build up your technical analysis and trade correctly the right way and things that are more favorable for you, it is better to learn to trade one or two patterns that work for you. There's tons of stocks out there that many people are making a killing off of. Many people are making hundreds of thousands of dollars off of them, but I don't trade them. And there's plenty of other stocks that I trade that many other people wouldn't even touch. And why is that? Because there's certain things that work in my favor, certain trades that I like to trade because they work for me. So you need to find which patterns, which technical patterns are going to work for you. Which ones are you comfortable with? Are you comfortable with you know, shooting the two-point shots, the foul shots, or the three-point shots if you're playing basketball? What area, what distance? From the left side of the court, from the right side of the court? Are you better at blocking? Are you better at dribbling, ball handling? What are you good at? So you need to find your edge and trade the patterns that work for you. And if you only know one pattern, that's perfectly fine. Then trade that pattern until you learn more, and then you can trade another pattern. Now, why is it that I don't trade the other patterns? Well, number one, because they're not profitable for me. I tend to lose many times if I trade stocks and patterns that aren't profitable for me, that aren't in my favor. If I don't see the pattern, if I don't see the uh, investment reward, I don't trade those stocks. It's kind of like if you're a fish, would you be living in the desert? Probably not because there's not a lot of water there. On the other hand, if you're a camel, would you want to live in the ocean? Again, probably not. It just doesn't make sense. It's not favorable to that environment. It's not favorable to you know the lifestyle that a camel would want to live is to live in the ocean. So the same thing here. What you want to do is find a pattern, find a technical analysis pattern that works for you. Rather than getting attached to a stock, emotionally attached to their products, to uh, the phones that they make, to uh, the banking provider that you have. And I know this is the initially what most people do, but go beyond that, especially if you want to be consistent at trading. You want to go beyond that. And then later, you'll start putting more and more pieces together. Rather than asking for the hot stock which stock is going to go up or which one's going to have, you know, FDA approvals or traded on the news. You know, of course, all those things, you put it together. So if you're looking at Walmart, let's just say since we have this chart up, you're looking at it and you're saying, okay, how are Walmart's financials? How are the products selling? Is the company profitable? If everything right there looks good on the balance sheet for you, because there's a lot of things I look at before I even get to, to the charts. So if all those things already look good, then you go to the charts. Now you wonder, what are the investors doing? What are the big multi-billion dollar investors doing? What are the CEOs doing? And this is what the chart tells you. This is what these patterns tell you. It also tells you what the other retail investors are doing. And right here, when the stock broke, you can see that it broke right here. It tells you the investors are getting out. They don't want to invest in Walmart anymore, especially right here. Here was the spike. This was the area where investors started to get out. And now, boom, the stock is selling off. Is there going to be a point where the stock is going to be favorable again to invest in? Of course, more than likely, 
this is going to happen because stocks, what what do they do? They move up, power higher, they consolidate, they power higher again, or they sell off after they consolidate. So look at what happens. Look at what happens to the stock. They power higher, pull back, things get favorable again, they get back in, things sell off again, then they get back in again, they sell off again. So investors change their mind. And when you look at these charts, you're looking at what are most of the investors doing? What is the global view of that company from the investor side? And this you're doing after you've already done your evaluation and analysis of the stock, of, of the company itself. And now you're looking at the pattern. Because all the companies that I'm already looking at already have great fundamentals, great financials, and so forth. And those are the ones that I want to be trading. And now I'm just looking at what are the traders and the investors doing for the longer term. Now, yes, from time to time, I will get into a stock or a trade just for the short term where they may go up or power higher for, let's say, a week or two because you know, it's an unknown company or the volume is there or just the technicals look good to me. So yes, I will trade some companies from time to time based on that. But in general, look at not just the company of what they do, whether that's a GoPro, but look at also what the investors are doing. If you only know one way to read a chart with a straight line hitting these different swing lows and swing points, if that's all you know, then those are the ones that you should stick with. Find patterns, and there's plenty of them. So look at uh, McDonald's here. Here's a straight line, multi-year straight line. The stock is trying to break higher. Uh, Walmart just happened right there. You got CSX right here, building, nice straight line. If you look at the monthly, there's your straight line, and you can see it. Now it can bounce here. That doesn't mean it's gonna be shorting here, but it can bounce. So you can play the bounce or you can play the short. See how things come in. How is the speed of that? So then you start building and adding to your knowledge and your analysis. But rather than just looking at the company and how good it looks, you know, what product it's selling, look at the pattern. Stick to the patterns that you're comfortable with, that Y-O-U, that are in your favor, rather than asking or trying to find that next hot stock. Because this pattern right here might be boring. Even a Walmart pattern might be boring. But what could you have made? Here's the trip advisor. Here's the pattern there, consolidation pattern. And if you would have shorted this stock, for me, is the short side, right here at these points, that was your opportunity to short the stock because you know it's a straight line pattern. There's resistance, so you short the stock. Now, of course, this stock, we were preparing to short it right here again. We didn't get an opportunity to because it, it bounced. We knew that this could happen. So it could bounce or stocks power higher because what happened here? Here it bounced and here it bounced as well. So you're paying close attention to the pattern, to behavior of traders. Uh, GMCR. Same thing. Here's a straight line pattern. And if you got into this straight line pattern, you would have made 60 points in three and a half months, 50%. Okay. I don't know where else you can get those kinds of returns, but that's phenomenal. So focus on trading the patterns, the technical patterns that are in your favor and not the hot, sexy stocks, choosing them simply by name. Always watch the fundamentals of the company ahead of time so that way you can filter and get rid of the 95% of the other stuff that you don't need to trade. It's kind of like walking into a grocery store. When you walk into a grocery store, typically there's a lot of junk food in there. There's a lot of things that are unhealthy. And I want to stick to the top 10% of the food, the food that's most healthiest in that store. So where do you hang around? The greens, the veggies, you hang around in that area. So that's what I want to do in the stock market as well. I want to hang out with that top 10% of the companies, okay, or the top 10% of the foods or companies that are in my favor, and then the ones that look good. Then you get into more specifics, like looking at a peach, you start squeezing it. How hard or soft is that peach? You start looking at, you know, apples, you start looking at bananas, how green or ripe are they? So that's the same thing here. Now you start looking at patterns, 
okay, technical patterns and how they are, how how strong or weak are they? How are they coming into the swing points? You started evaluating this. All right, so I hope this recap was helpful, gives you some insight to sticking to things that are in your favor, the patterns that are working for you and in your favor. And if you haven't found your pattern, stick to keep keep it simple. Keep it in a straight line and then eventually you'll evolve. You'll add more things to your uh, arsenal, to your weapons list or to your toolbox. And then you'll be able to use those things as you get better and progress as a trader. Okay, so again, uh, thanks for joining me. I do want to let you know that Penny Stock Book coming out here in about three to five days. It will be available for print. It's going to be in black and white. Next month, we will be focusing on adding a lot of these other books into um, ebook format and so forth. I have one of my assistants helping me out with that. She does a fantastic job with all of this. So she's handling all that. Um, and we'll, we'll start releasing these over time um, in ebook format. And basically, I have some business things that I need to take care of uh, for the business uh, consultations and things that I do. And once those wrap up um, with the business projects that I'm working on within a couple weeks, uh, we'll be focusing only on that options course. And that options course is going to be very big, very massive. And that's going to be my main focus. Uh, if you're looking for an expected release date for the options course, I can't promise one right now. So please don't hold me to what I say here. But my goal is probably right in early January. Uh, I would hope to do it end of December, but unfortunately with December, we have a lot of holidays and you spend a lot of time with the family. So I'm not sure if things would get done by then. But uh, January would be my, my projected estimated goal if things run late and the course becomes bigger might turn into early February or sometime then. But uh, otherwise, uh, that's basically my main project right here once this book is released after we take care of a few business things. So thanks again for joining me. I hope you truly enjoyed this recap. It's always a pleasure, definitely a pleasure doing these recaps because uh, of what emails and success stories that I hear from you guys. Um, you know, I don't have to do this. This this isn't something that I really have to do. I could also just, you know, read a bunch more books, um, probably read thousands upon thousands of books on different subjects to human psychology. And I could do those kinds of things. Um, but you know, for me, I enjoy the connection aspect. It's it's fun for me. Uh, it's a great way to connect uh, with with a lot of other people, and uh, to hear the light bulb, to hear the success stories, and the phone calls of gratitude that I get. That's just rewarding. And um, I guess I'm a sucker for education. Uh, you know, I started uh, teaching about 15, 17 years ago in the martial arts. I don't know if I shared this story with a lot of you, uh, but uh, when I first started martial arts. I uh, basically, you know, was just like a little kid and, you know, you get better at martial arts as time goes on and eventually you have to take on more responsibilities. So by the time I was 14, 15, I started doing a lot of assisting and teaching and, um, and helping out the instructor. And from there, I, you know, I taught martial arts for about 10 to 12 years. And then uh, the next four to five years, I actually ran my own dojo, but we didn't take on any new uh, students um, after I was given that dojo because my instructor wanted to retire. I just said, okay, we'll, we'll work it with the new students and we'll just teach them as far as things go. And, and that's really where I got my start with teaching. So, you know, we all have different places where we start. And if you're just at the beginning, if you're just starting the trading journey at the beginning, don't be scared. Just take it one step at a time, one foot in front of the other, and you'll get there. But there's a lot of steps that you need to do to get to the destination. And the destination is never ending. You're going to keep going and you're going to keep moving forward so long as that you keep walking or moving your feet or crawling. If you got to crawl there, then crawl there, but keep moving forward. All right. Thanks again. I'll see you next time.